Hello, it's Anna here. Welcome to my office, guys. I just think this is the perfect setup for today's video, which is going to be all about the top five things that have made my life as a macrame artist just a little bit easier. And by a little bit, I mean a lot easier. <laughs> Before I jump into the list, I just want to mention this is my list and I've prioritized it according to my needs, meaning because I work on certain projects, mostly you will see me doing wall hangings or maybe chandeliers. They, these are the tools that I need or make my life easier for those projects. So if you work on very different ones, maybe you do a lot of small things or, or, you know, I don't know, clothing, for example, from macrame, your list might be a little bit different in terms of what you need for that work. And one more thing, none of these things that are on the list are a necessity. So the idea for this video is to inspire you. If you've tried macrame before and you know that this is a hobby that you like, it's just that you don't really have the right setup at home maybe to inspire you to invest in some of these pieces that will um, make a difference for you. All right, now let's get to the list. Every item on that list, I will describe it to you, how I use it, why do I like this particular item, and also if you check the description down below, you will find all of the links to these products as well. All right, my number one item on that list is by far a clothing rack. You can see behind me, I've actually got two. So there's the silver one and then a black one in the back. And why is it number one for me? Well, because I do a lot of wall hangings and doing wall hangings without having like a proper structure to set up your piece of driftwood or a dowel rod on, it's annoying. So when I found these, I was so happy and you can kind of see, you know, the reason I've got two is because the silver one is kind of like my working one. And then the other one, as you can see, that's like a storage one where I keep all of the finished pieces here in this room. Now I didn't go and buy just any clothing rack. There's a couple things very specific to this one, why I've purchased it, purchased it for macrame. So the number one being that it's on wheels and there is nothing at the bottom. There is just one rod at the bottom, but no, you know, I've seen others that have like kind of shelves in there, I guess because they are meant for your like hallway or entryway, not for macrame. So they have like shelves for shoes or whatever that would just, I think, get in the way. Like if you're standing close to it, working on your piece, you want as much room for your feet as possible. And the wheels, of course, make it extremely practical because you can just move it around. You don't have to lift it up and move it somewhere. It's just on those wheels. Another extremely important thing for me about this clothing rack is that it has changeable height. So you see these little screws on the side. If I just unscrew them, I can change the like second portion of the clothing rack to go up or down as I need it to. And this is extremely important because as I'm working on my piece, I started, you know, at the very top with, you know, the, at the top of the driftwood, let's say. But then if the piece is 50 centimeters long, 60 centimeters long, I don't want to have to crouch or, or maybe I don't want to sit on a chair to do it. I would much rather just raise up the rack so that the entire piece goes up and I can just keep working. And of course, I love the design of this one in particular. That's also why I use this one as my working one, where you see that on the, you know, in my videos all the time, because I think it just looks nice. And even if I have it, you know, in the middle of my living room, I don't mind because it just, it fits in nicely. The one thing I will say this one doesn't have is like extendable, I'm going to call it arms or, you know, like at the top, the, the top section, 
I've seen racks that also can extend um, to, to get them, make them wider so that you can hang, for example, like I have the wedding curtain all the way in the back that could use a, a rack that was a little bit wider, but normally, I mean, that was just one piece that I was making. Normally I'm more than okay with this one um, to make that work. All right, so that was my clothing rack. Again, if you're making wall hangings, this is definitely something you should consider purchasing. Moving on, number two on my list is my brush. I don't use that one on every single piece, but there are certainly many pieces that I've used it on to brush out the fringe. And I've tried multiple brushes, and so far this is the best one that I have found, which makes the process go so much faster. And I think there are really two reasons for that. One, the shape, so it's being tri like a triangle, right? The top is a little bit more narrow, so I can really get it to that start of the cord where it's maybe a little bit more narrow, a little bit more tighter. And then as I brush out, it gets to the more wider part, so more of that fringe is being brushed out. I have no idea if any of this made sense, but I hope it did. That's my explanation for it. And the other reason being the fine bristles on this brush. Again, just capturing more, splitting up more the, the tiny pieces of cord from each other. And just like with the clothing rack, it's all about the design for me. So I also really like the wooden handle on this and then the rest of it is just silver. So it's just, it looks nice. What can I say? I found this um, as a like a regular pet brush, so you know, a brush for dogs or cats or whatever, but um, I think this works perfect for macrame as well. Okay, number three on my list is my hot glue gun. Now, you might think that hot glue gun is not exactly your typical macrame <laughs> setup or, or equipment, but it definitely is for me. I use it all the time for multiple things, but usually for like, you, you've seen me use it quite a bit for my chandeliers, but I also use it even on the wall hangings where I just need to, you know, tuck a few cords behind and, and kind of behind the work just so that they're not visible or so that the end is a little bit more like breezy. There is less cords hanging down. I'll definitely use the hot glue gun for that. And yes, I mean, you can kind of weave those cords through the back of the work, but I always found that being very like tedious work and, and my hands would hurt and it was just not the way for me. I'm definitely the one, you know, the person who just wants to do things the easiest way possible. And for me, that's the hot glue gun. Now I chose this particular one for, again, a couple reasons. One being the design. Yes, I like how it looks like. But then also it came with this very practical stand. So that was a problem that I had before with another hot glue gun that I was using, that it just wouldn't stand properly or it would keep like falling down, falling to its side, which you should not keep your hot glue gun laying on the side. It should always be in that like upright position. And so this stand is very handy for that. And there is also like that plastic area where the hot glue, like if it's, if you are not using, you know, like if I'm using it for an hour and during that hour, like every, I don't know, every 30 seconds, I put the hot glue gun down, then it's staying there for 30 seconds. Then I pick it back up. The hot glue is dripping from the hot glue gun. And so that plastic makes it very convenient because it's so easy to then take off the dried glue off of that, just throw it out and it's like new. Moving on to number four, which is my very sharp scissors. Now I use these for cutting a very sharp edge to a fringe. So I also use just like regular scissors for just cutting the cord because then like these are a little bit too heavy for that, like to, to hold them for such a long time in my hand. But for that fringe, you really want that clean, crisp 
look, you need sharp scissors. So these are actually scissors that are, are sold as um, sewing scissors for um, seamstresses. Um, but I use them for my macrame fringe. And I mean, there isn't much to them other than them being super sharp and not too heavy. Like I've definitely had some that were heavier than these ones. You might remember my uh, video with the Mandela's where I was cursing <laughs> because I didn't have these scissors. I had to use some others that were really heavy and really difficult. Like it just wasn't, the cutting wasn't as smooth, so it was really difficult to cut through the, the cords, but these are awesome. And of course, the design, you got it. These just look really cute and pretty, so that's my scissors. And last but not least, number five, fabric stiffening spray. Now I don't use this that often. I mean, the bottle is still empty, so I did use it a bit, but I don't use it that often. You saw me use it on my wreath for the door. You also saw me use it on the Mandela's. So anything that's hanging, like anywhere where there is a fringe that needs to kind of stay in place, but if you just left it to gravity, it would sort of just, you know, swoop down and it, it wouldn't be as nice. So for example, I thought of as well, like if you're doing macrame feathers, which is something very popular, that's maybe something where you can use this to really keep, you know, that leaf shape staying in that shape. And I would say with, with these sprays, I think there is quite a variety. I mean, I've only tried this one so far, but I think there is also quite a variety of sprays that can add a little bit of a sparkle to the piece or, or maybe color it slightly differently if you want that look. So have a look around, but again, something worth looking into if you are doing a lot of fringe pieces. And that concludes my list of the five most useful tools I use as a macrame artist. Now, I'm very curious, guys. Let me know down in the comments which one do you already have, which one you know you can't live without anymore, or which one of them do you think you want to invest in and why? All of the tools I was describing, I've linked down in the description of the video. Now, some of those are like literally the exact match of the product. Some of them are a little bit different. It depends on what I was able to find because most of these I bought through some Czech resellers here or, or Czech manufacturers. So they're not available globally for you guys, my global, global audience. I hope you found this video helpful as always, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.